Okay, hello everybody. We are here again at the Back to the Sal study course uh, here at Emma. Um, the uh, purpose of this course is to um, walk through the Getty um, at a, a Emma's first, broadly speaking, Emma's first introductory level or recruit level and take a note at all the things that we might miss if we were just um, showing up to class and training on the Sal floor. Because of course there is um, sometimes a significant distance between what we experience on the cell floor and um, what we're reading in the manuscript. Um, because of course the instructors have to distill it down for us and put it into a manageable curriculum, et cetera, et cetera. So we're like 20 something weeks in now. Um, we've gone through the almost the entire book. We're now at the spear section and um, we're gonna continue with spear today. Um, uh, the last the last few weeks, both Kel and myself have been the principal voices on Monday nights. Um, it's important that you know that while Monday nights is more of a, you know, us telling you what we think kind of deal, um, you know, we are just uh, two people of many. And we don't want you to believe something is so just because we said it. We want um, you to be convinced by the same evidence that convinces us. And that's partly... Uh, what we try to do in these sessions as best we can is to tell you what we think and, and, and why. Um, if you have any questions about anything in um, the sessions, please do say so um, when right away, as soon as you, uh, you can. If you have a question, chances are a bunch of other people have the same question too. So there's no, there's no dumb questions whatsoever. And um, sure. yeah. Uh, let, let me backtrack a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, for those of you that uh, are waiting for my answers to the poll ask questions, I spent about two hours on it today. I've got probably another two to three hours uh, to put examples together and things like that for your questions. So if you still have any more questions about the poll ask section, uh, either direct mail me at krakuta at emma.org or uh, you can put them on the disk discus list here uh, i made a comment to amber i don't know if she's on tonight but i made a comment to her because she said she had some questions but hadn't posted them so i'm still working on it and uh it'll come up and it'll be one of these things like this wicked hour thing has provost uh, sections and uh, free scholar sections and stuff and aaron will be able to stick my comments about poll acts into all of these sections absolutely i will that's he, why i made he, those he sections can figure yeah. all, he yeah. can figure all this kind of stuff out that i can't yeah. Um, all right. So with um, with all of that said, we are at the spear section today. Um, so that's exciting. Um, we're broadly speaking, um, we are in the second half of Fiore's Getty, where the first half seems to have dealt with um, the foundational topics of uh, wrestling and dagger. And then, of course, a sword in two hands. Um, and we also have some inter, uh, some in between topics that tie the sections together: um, baston and cello, dagger and sword, sword in one hand, uh, dagger, spear, and clubs, and etc. Um, the book seems to be kind of in two parts, separated by the senyo page, which is central to our understanding of what Fiore thinks fighting and fighters uh, should be. And then in the second half of the book. Um, we have uh, what seems to be topics mostly about combat in armor and full harness. Um, and we have the sword and armor section, the axe and armor section, the spear, and then mounted combat. So we're on spear today. Um, the spear section is organized in two parts. It's got um, three masters and then some plays. Uh, and then another three masters in some place, and you'll see why uh, they're, it's organized this way when we get into it. Um, but like we typically do with all the sections here in this course, we're going to take a moment to contextualize the spear a bit um, before we, we jump into it. So to begin, um, all the context about being in armor applies here. Obviously, this, is, this topic is spear in armor specifically. Um, but the spear is a new weapon now uh, for, for us. Um, uh, and Cal, jump in here whenever you want. So the spear that we're looking at, the weapon, is going to be, it's going to tend to be larger than the poleaxe and larger than the sword, right? Um, so it's going to stand maybe as about as tall as you or a little taller, but not over long, 
right? Um, it's not for it's not made for throwing, although you you could throw it absolutely, uh, absolutely you could. Um, but it's a stout um, a stout shaft of, of of wood, maybe with langets, maybe not, with a with a point on it, and um, it's uh, yeah, and it's held uh, by a, a fully armored uh, man here. Um, and it also has an iron shod foot. Yes, that's uh, that's right. Um, like the pole axe is advised uh, to have, um, if I recall. And of course, the sword ha effectively has one because of the of the pommel. Um, the spear. Uh, so we saw with the axe that the axe had some elements of largo play. What we would, what we might may call largo play. Um, uh, from earlier sections, right? In the sword and two hands section, we, we, we conceptualized the problem uh, or Fiore conceptualized the problem by seeming to divide his work between two sections, Giaco Largo and Giaco Stretto, the long play and the close play. Um, and so in the, in the armored section, we started off with the sword and armor, which as we saw, tended to live in the area of close play although it could have elements of largo play in it um you know thrusting with both hands on the on the hilt uh, to the weak points is perfectly possible whatever the sword and armor tended to end up in some element of close play the axe definitely had close play elements to it but we saw with the axe elements of largo play come back in where strikes with the axe, with the axe head, um, to the armor of the uh, the opponent could potentially defeat the armor. And isn't that interesting? And now we have the spear. The spear is longer than the axe, of course, longer than the sword. So we're still going to have an element of Largo uh, play with um, the plays of the spear. Um, but of course, we're also going to see some elements of close play as well. So um, looking ahead, those of you who remember the axe section, we should expect to see probably some things similar, uh, things that we're not completely unfamiliar with, um, but uh, maybe maybe a couple things that are that are a little different. Um, the major difference, of course, between the axe and the spear is the spear isn't going to be used in Largo in a striking motion. So the spear is predominantly a thrusting weapon. Um, it's distinct from weapons like what we see in the mounted section at the very end. Um, it's distinct from weapon like this, the uh, Gavarina. Is that how it's pronounced? Gavarina. Uh, Gavarina. It's distinct from weapons like this, which are spear-like weapons, um, but they're, they, they have a cutting edge. You know, there's all sorts of hafted weapons like this. Kel had a good bit about this on, on Wednesday last week when the scholars did it. You know, there's bill hooks and partisans and who knows, there's tons of different weapons that we have all these different crazy names for um, that serve the purpose of being a long hafted weapon with a head that can both uh, cut and, and, and thrust or sometimes just even cut, right? So there's lots of weapons like that, but the spear section is not what, that's not what we're dealing with. We're dealing with a, um, a predominantly thrusting weapon here. Um, okay. What else is there to say? Probably that's probably enough. Do you want to add anything there, Kel? Nope. Perfect. All right. So, um, now let's get into it. Okay. So again, like I said, the uh, Fury seems to divide the spear section into two parts, the first masters and the second masters um, these two parts seem to be divided by where the spear lies so and we're just gonna we're just taking a look at this quickly for for context so in this first section where we're just about to get into we're going to look at three posta all which uh, have the spear on the right side of the body of the master and then plays that result from those posta and then in the second section, we're going to have spear uh, three posta with the spears on the left side and plays that result from that. And that's how that's how Fury has chosen to, to organize this section. OK, so 
Um, I think that's all the context we need. Does anybody have any questions before we start? No? All righty. Let's get right into it. So the section starts uh, in the Getty Folio 39 R A to B. And who's our first victim? Andrew, would you like to read the text for us, please? And thank you. Okay. We are three masters in guard with our lances, and we aptly take the guards of the sword. I am the first who has set in two deported a pharaoh to quickly beat away the lance of the opponent. I will pass obliquely out of line with the right foot, and crossing his lance, I will beat it away to the left. As long as you pass and parry in a single step with your strike, this action cannot fail. Thank you very much, Andrew. All right. Here we are. So um, we have the we have the the master holding the spear um, fairly fairly vertical on his left side, and circumstantially, um, this is also going to be the the posta that begins the the second section. So on his uh, right side, on on his on his right side, yeah, but, but on his right side. I just want to take a a moment to talk about this because we haven't really seen a sword posta or an axe posta like this um yet um so th this is at first a little interesting uh uh at f or it's a little unique at first glance so um this oh uh, one more note on the spear before before i forget so the spear is an uh, is a um it's a complicated weapon it's not an easy what? weapon to use it's not an easy weapon to use well is more what i mean it's, it seems, yeah, that's another that's another word for it. It seems like a very simple weapon. Of course, the spear is one of the most common weapons that human beings have used throughout all of time. But in the simplicity of the tool, there's a lot of complex. Uh, there's a lot of complexity in the martial requirements that you need to deploy when you're when you're using it. Um, the kind of spear work that we're looking at here in Fiore is not the kind of use of the spear that we might commonly recall in movies or tv shows and things that are you know the spear is used in mass formations of organized troops and things like that obviously spears have those uses but the spear here is being used in a situation of personal combat not obviously in a formation um and it's this context here of personal combat with the spear against a single opponent um at least in in immediately uh that's the subject that we're um we're dealing with here strangely enough just as an aside <clears throat> one of the best depictions of spear play uh in a movie and then you know like a mm. hollywood type movie with stunt mm. fighting and all that is oddly enough in 1980s excalibur yes. mordred fights with a spear against arthur with excalibur and his spear work is actually quite good after considering it. the time and place mm. so i would suggest if you can put up with the horrific soundtrack <laughs> um you know rewatch the movie there's there's that fight and there's also the fight between arthur and uh lancelot where lancelot's first introduced and he's fighting with a short sort of a spike thing yeah. <laughs> uh, which i've i've found absolutely amazing and i made one and i fought with it for years and it was really a scream because people could not figure it out but it, it's just a, the equivalent of a short act without a long blade but the the point of it is uh, there were some interesting fighting choreographies created for that movie which, uh, considering its time and place, were, were quite novel. So, I mean, compared to what we do with uh, Fiori's spear today, they're quite simplistic. But if you want to see what a spear can do against a shorter weapon, you can't go far wrong from that two- or three-minute clip of, of Mordred in his beautiful golden armor fighting Lancelot. Everybody, everybody here should, should we, we should just we should just say this right here. If you haven't watched Excalibur right now, please stop, leave, go oh, find oh. it and watch it, and then Another come back is, and get the recording because you have to you see, have to watch it. <laughs> you see Patrick Stewart with hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You do. It's and, crazy. And yeah. Liam Neeson. Liam Neeson's about twenty years old. Yeah. Oh, it's it's that's a crazy movie. Amazing. Uh, yeah. All right. All right. So, um, so the spear, the spear vertical here. So, um, 
this is this this is interesting to us because it starts to show it's it starts to give us um some more uh, combat logic that we're going to we're going to want to know uh, after we finish studying fury and looking at uh, at other things um specifically why the spear is placed vertical on one side of the body and the other and this is how fury's organized his his treatment of the spear as opposed to showing the master with the spear held out in some in some aggressive way where the points online etc cetera, etc cetera. so when you think of someone holding a shield usually someone who's holding a shield doesn't hold it behind them or like above their head or whatever usually someone holding a shield holds it on one side of their body or the other okay and when you see somebody holding a shield the shield has to be on one side of the body or the other or, or i guess i suppose square in front of you but that's anyway but where the shield is that part of the body is covered right that's a very obvious and natural image that everybody has in their mind where the shield is that part of the body is covered so if you're going to attack somebody holding a, sh a shield you're probably not going to attack somebody at least initially where the shield is because the shield is covering that part and it's precisely that logic that allows you with a shield to help control the fight because you're telling your enemy please attack me where my shield isn't and that way i kind of know where i think you're going to go so you're already bringing order into chaos now incidentally the spear is doing a very similar thing here the spear is bisecting or what fury is doing with the spear is he's bisecting the body and he's saying i'm going to hold my spear on my right side in this case so which side of me are you gonna thrust and remember thrust can be tricky right thrust can be cavitated thrust can be you know the target can be changed a little bit on on, on entry thrust can be tricky so what fury is doing here is he's holding the spear on one side of his body or the other in the case of the the first play of the other the other set and he's refused well he's refused in the second case but the point is what he's doing is he's saying all right look you got a spear are you going to attack me on my right side where my spear is no probably not right you're going to attack me on my proffered provocated side and this allows me to put some predictability and order into my response and as you might expect all of the defenses and actions that are going to come from the posts on the right side they're going to be moving to the left right and conversely on the other side they're going to be moving from the left to the right and this is the basic setup that fiore has with this his treatment of the spear now obviously there's exceptions to every rule but this is the first thing that we're looking at this is the first thing we're going to notice okay um the second thing is that the the uh, the zugadores here in this peer section are not uh, scholars nor are they masters nor are they forming the posta uh that's being demonstrated so uh kel uh thinks and i agree that these are examples of um common common uses of the spear um and i don't think that's too controversial a point broadly speaking anyway um so that's also something that we're going to see as well right um all right what else lastly what's actually hap going on in this play right so you'll all recall um th thrusting of course is not a new concept for us we're we're aware of it previously we know from the sword into hand section that in the largo that fiore talks at length about defending against a thrust um, either exchanging the point or breaking it with the sword so we know about thrusts already right the exchange of points folio 26 va so how shocking is it then that um in this play here we're going to do something that is similar right the thrust comes in fiori says he'll pass obliquely offline with the right foot crossing his lance beating it away to the left and as long as you pass and parry in uninterrupted oh that's the first translation as long as you pass and parry in a single step with your strike this action cannot fail and of course once the 
spear is contacted, it's contacted point online, and the follow-up thrust can then be put into the opponent's weak spot. It is a classic exchange of points, schiambare yeah. de punta. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so though it's a new weapon that we've never seen before, we're still on very solid, well-trod theoretical ground. We know where we are, we know what exchange of point is, um, we're doing it here now with a spear. Any questions about that? Nope. All right. Um, don't be put off by the fact that this comes to a point here. Um, this isn't the point of the spear. <laughs> don't don't think that. Uh, <laughs> All right. The next guy, 39 R, C, and D. Uh, Bruce. Oh, no, BD. BD's next up on the hit list. Would you like to read this for us? Please and thank you. Yes, of course. I am situated in Mezza Forte de Ferro with my lance. My custom is always to parry and to strike. Come on, if you want, with your half lance or staff. I will parry while passing and strike you with a... Any offline guard with a short lance or a short sword is adequate for waiting against any long-held weapon. Right-sided guards will parry, and while parrying, pass and strike with a thrust. Left-sided guards will parry and beat aside, and strike with a cut, but are not as good for reposting with a thrust. All right, thank you very much, B. So, here is the second posta, posta mezza porta di ferro, a posta that we're familiar with from the sword section. And, um, but it's yeah. full uh, to the Porta de Ferro in the sword section. Yes, that's that's right. Why he because calls it something the... different, I'm not sure. Well, I am. All right, what's the, what's the theory? Okay, the action is what describes the post of the action that it can make, mm. not what it looks like. That's a Porta de Ferro covers half of your body, to the Porta de Ferro covers all across the front. So in the first play, you have exchange of point that can cover attack to any quadrant. Whereas in Metsa Porta de Ferro, it's very difficult to cover the lower left quadrant. And it's also much more challenging to cover a reverso from there because you can put it up and cover it, but you can't get your point online. So it only does half the job. Hmm. That Tut de Porta de Ferro does in the same way that Tut de Porta de Ferro in the sword in two hands does all across your covers, can cover everything at all. Hmm. Whereas Metsa Porta de Ferro can only cover half of your body. Hmm. It's a really simple concept. And when you look at it through all the different weapons, you see the same actions coming up and their results. Yeah, that's a that's a really important thing also to note, Kel, broadly about the nature of the spear, and that is that unlike with the sword, the spear isn't, mm, it's not really as versatile at defending from the same side as where it's lying in terms of getting the point online and getting effective thrusts and, and, uh, uh, and, and, and engagements. You have, you, you have one seventh of the possible blows to throw because you only have a thrust. Yeah. So um, in these images, he's usually, the figure is usually drawn opposite someone who's holding the spear on the same side as the figure. So these guys are both holding the spear on their right the zoop, side. The zoops are yeah. always on the right, every yeah. single time. Uh, oh, 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 okay. So then, so then on the left side, we'll see, we'll see the, the opposite. All right. So that's also important to, to, to note. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 And the, the difficulties of dealing with attacks on the same side as where you're lying with a spear will become <laughs> glaringly obvious Apparently. once you do it. Uh, and th yeah. And that's, that's why the concept of, uh, for, for those of you in Toronto and Guelph, uh, and the concept of mirroring your practice so that if, you know, one of you is lying on the right, you lie on the right and that sort of thing. No, 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 no. Uh, lie on the right and lie on the left against everything against the right. And then if you switch sides, you'll find that those same defenses don't work against attacks from the reverso. You have to find new ways to look at it. And what Fiore is showing you in the spear section is these are the various ways that you can make covers against a common attacker. 
a common attacker is not going to attack you from the verso side because it's cumbersome and it's and it requires mm. art common fencers don't have art as a rule so it's a very instructive uh mm. passage here mm. and it, it also plays into the pole axe as well uh, <clears throat> because attacks from the left can be horrific with a pole axe but the solutions are quite different than with the sword for example mm. and anyways please continue yeah and uh um last but definitely not least um there's a comment here that seems rather broad about about guards it's possible that he's talking specifically about lance armor but i i don't i don't think so any offline no, guard no, with a short no, lance no, no. or short sword this is, is about the lance all right so it's enough to wait for any uh, handheld lance. weapon right-sided guards which is where we're at will parry and, and while parrying pass and strike with a thrust so he's his his sword uh his sword his spear will be coming sw sweeping in to make the engagement uh from the right to the left to well, to the middle right making the engagement with a point online and then his pass forward and, and combined with his his beginning step a little offline will set up the the counter thrust right um left-sided guards will parry and beat aside and strike with a with a cut but are not as good for answering uh, an answer with a thrust and this is something that we saw we theorized about with the sword uh and where fury he, he doesn't say it explicitly earlier where he he seems to suggest that maybe if you're lying on the right you can pass and 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 exchange the point or beat but if you're lying on the left he'd prefer you just beat mm. um but it's it's interesting, right? This is this is just something mm. that's that's in the text here. It's an, as as when we dealt with it in the sword section, it's an ongoing question of debate and, and interest with the scholars. But but here it is in the text. Okay, um, I'm gonna say that uh, agree to a certain extent. Can you go back to the text there? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, these these sentences are not necessarily combined. He, he described where he's standing in the, in, in the stance of the text and his custom is to cover and to strike. Now, you see the uh, Italian is lo, lo arrebater e lo ferre, which means to beat and to strike, not to parry. Okay, it's not the same word. Right? So it's, a, it's an interesting thing. And this is another Tom Leone uh, Renaissance fencing, uh, uh, to do a tempo fencing problem here uh, most people don't understand the difference between parry and cover cover is something that allows you to make a middle time or mezza tempo strike uh, while you're covered whereas a parry is literally a something set aside where you start and stop and then then you uh, make your next attack uh, there is no from the right here there is no stoppage it's all one motion, and he makes that yeah. clear in the previous stanza. All right, mm. now and it says here, here any offline guard with a short lance or a short sword, and it's not a short like short blade, but a short nor half sword, uh, is enough to wait for any long handheld weapon. So what he's saying is, it doesn't matter what long weapons coming at you, a pole axe, or a spear, or whatever. Uh, it's any offline guard mm -hmm. will work against a long weapon. And then he continues to say right side guides will uh, cover, is it, is it beat, and then pass off the line with a strike, right? So while parrying, pass and strike with a thrust. Left side guards will cover and beat a side, rebatere, and strike with a cut but are not as good as answering with a thrust that makes no sense right because you, you you can't easily cut with a spear yeah right? I, I would tend to piano. yeah okay so yeah. when you look at this last text in italian e la guardia de parte de parte is the, the play the, the the action the sinestra from the left cover covrano coverta it's a, it's it's the same verb a rabateno beats away a di copo fierano now that's not strike uh, that's not strike with a cut it's strike like a cut 
So you're not you're going to be trying to bring the point back into line, which is what you do with a cut. You're trying to get the, to the center line, post the longa, right? And no po mete chosi penputa, but are not as good to make a thrust. The thrust because it's really hard when you've made a beat to get your point back offline. That because it to is. To make a beat, your point is offline. It's going mm -hmm. past the center line. Mm -hmm. So it's not as good to lay a thrust in with that. And a lot of people read this as, well, I've got a beat, and to beat, I have to use the heel, uh, you know, the, the, the foot of the, of the spear. And they go wrong with this because they try to do everything with the foot of the spear. And it, what makes it even worse is anybody that is really interested in pole wax fudges all this stuff together from Fiori and from uh, Le Jeu de la Hache, whereas like two-thirds of the covers are made with the butt of the spear, which they call the, the foot, or the cue, the tail. Um, it's, it's, you got to be careful here to not collide these things all into one long paragraph. He's giving you three different admonitions. So in that respect, I agree to an extent with what you say, Aaron, mm. but I think that you're missing the breaks here, that they're not they're not all one blended thing. Each of them is a particular admonition. Uh, any offline guard is good with a lance or a sword, you know. It's good for against a long handheld weapon. Yeah, well, um, well, again, I'm right not right side guards are parry. But anyways, my my point is, don't blend it all together because he's saying three different things here. Yeah, I'm, first and I'm, I'm not so. The mm -hmm. First he's describing the post, and then he's saying any guard was good again. You know, offline mm -hmm. is good against this, that, or the other thing because you can make a beat cover, right? And then he says and particularly with the spear he doesn't have to say particularly with the spear mm. but from the right this works and from mm. the left not so much yeah my, my point of bringing this up also was not not to take a position on it i don't really have a position per se on it just to make sure that people know that it's here right you know we want to address it yeah since we've it's got it in the text address it it's interesting and, and yeah. as i say i i have a distinct position on it because i've been over this a mm. lot mm. And uh, yeah, it also you know these these subjects when this when the scholars um, when the scholar class rotates to be doing spear and polax subjects and you know sword and two uh, the, the the half sword subjects these are topics that we argue about regularly whenever they come up right once a year or however often because um, they're here. Um, all right, any uh, any other questions or comments about this uh, this uh, post here? Mm -hmm. uh, the hand position is that. With hands knuckles up like holding a dagger. You uh, you mean you're talking about the master figure? Yes. Um, well, let me zoom in. Left hand palm down, right hand palm up. Yeah. Left hand palm down, right hand palm up. Yeah. Right. Hey, that's good. Yeah. Okay. All right. So. To the final master on the right side, Posta di Finestra. Did I misspell that? Oh, no, I didn't. Destra. There you go. Okay, 39 V, A, and B. Uh, Bruce, would you like to read this one for us? I am the noble right Posta di Finestra, always quick to parry and strike. Your long lance does not impress me much. I would wait for your long lance in the same guard if I had a sword, since this guard parries and slows down every thrust. I can easily perform the exchange of thrusts, and beating your weapon to the ground will work without fail. We want to finish our actions with the play that follows. All right, thank you very much, Bruce. Okay, so this is also a one of the three posta that Fiori shows. Um, for us for the spear. It's probably one of the um, the more counterintuitive uh, for the, the the new person to spear. Um, it's the spear, especially a spear of stout uh, craft, stout wood and you know with a with a good spear handle there. It doesn't seem obviously to be well it seems it seems very instabile, let's just say. It seems very um, mutable. Um, and in fact, of course, that that is 
what it is. Um, this spear uh, is going to be um, it's going to be deployed as follows. I'm going to draw it out and attempt to show you because it some can be difficult to that'd, think about. That would be interesting. So, yeah, let's see if I can do this. All right. So the spear is on the right side here. Okay, it's on the it's on the it's on the player's right side. The thrust is going to come in as as normal. What's going to happen is this end of the spear and this hand are going to shoot straight over here in front of the hip yeah with with uh with a, a volta stabile volta stabile yeah and the point here isn't really going to move that much and this is actually one of the one of the difficult skills that, that this post uh, uh, requires because doing this motion without that spear point moving very much is difficult it's not intuitive you have to practice it uh, usually when you do this your spear point bucks out and and you fucked it uh, <laughs> but um yeah, it's it's not it's not yeah. uh, it's not something that you can just go hey i can do that I'm, yeah you've seen someone else do it you i've never seen anyone do it without being without have witnessed a demonstration of it yeah uh and, it and is it's just it's not uh, it's it's art it's just not a simple it con, is uh, it's not a simple thing subtle is and the, it is the word it is very subtle yeah and and so and, when this when this uh comes into play when this hand shoots to the left hip the spear will go from being completely out of the center to excluding the center just as well as any of the other posta did right and it's going to exclude and, right hands low point high right um and this yeah with with this hand being the high hand right yep um and so you know this hand is going to be on the shaft here and um yeah that's i mean this really not much much else to say that's the motion if you can imagine that if you can't imagine it then there's nothing i can do for you we'd have to do it uh, show it in in person um but this is how this is going to kind of unwind and the tricky thing about it is to make sure it unwinds on time and you know in a similar way uh, you know finestra kind of has that that aspect to it if you're doing something like this um it kind of has a similar aspect to it to all of the posts that, that are point uh point away where it's fine to have a post that that's point uh point facing backwards you just got to make sure that point or that sort arrives where it's supposed to be on time yeah. so if you have uh, comfort with finestra on the right with the sword in two hands mm -hmm. you will understand this against a high thrust with another sword you want to bring your point forward but not up you want to bring your yeah. hands down as they come forward in front of your hip and you create energy moving forward with the volta stabile but your point has to be lower than the point that's coming at you yeah. so that you can cover that point behind the head of his spear the same way that you would cover between the weak and the middle of an incoming sword thrust high to your face or shoulder or neck it's exactly the same motion but because both are longer weapons and cover distance more quickly they are much more difficult to judge mm -hmm. and obviously handling a sword in two hands versus handling a spear in two hands at crossed wrists is a whole new world yeah and oh man i can't there's so many things about the spear we didn't even talk about this okay so an, another Another critical aspect of the spear that makes it martially complex in comparison to all the weapons that we've dealt with previously is the handedness of it. So when if we look at if we look at the weapons that we've dealt with before, the dagger, the sword, um, you know, the sword and armor and the axe to a, a lesser extent, there's some handedness change here, but but mostly, the weapon, uh, the main hand that we have on the weapon we're using stays there, right? It doesn't change at all. It doesn't, fly, you know, go flying. Of course, we can decide to drop the weapon, 
Oh, that's always on the table. But generally speaking, the main hand on a weapon stays, and the off hand moves around or does or does whatever. But because the main hand on these weapons stays, we have a permanent fixture and understanding of that weapon in time and place because the circumstance of our connection to that object do not change. There is no variation to it. There's no calculation to it. The hand is on the main part of the sword or on the dagger and it stays there, right? With the spear, you know, obviously- No, no okay, sorry. Sorry, sorry Kyle, go no ahead. Change, no change in your central structure Yeah with a sword in one hand or two hands versus the other two weapons, which are mm -hmm. fundamentally mm -hmm. structured differently mm -hmm. depending on which hand leads. Yeah. And, right on track yeah. there. Yeah, and so th what's crazy about the spear and, and it, what, what's crazy challenging about the spear is that the handedness of the spear is utterly changeable, utterly versatile. Right. Broadly speaking, as Fury has laid it out, the side that you're on, the side the spear is on, that hand is up and the opposite side hand is low. So on the right side, it's right hand high, left hand low. And on the left side, it's left hand high, right hand low. But where the, the hands are in the spear can change, it can change infinitely to fit the situation. And with two hands on the spear, that more or less intersects the spear in thirds so there's going to be the section above the the main hand the part between the hands and the part below the bottom hand and so what we're seeing here in uh, finestra here is we're seeing we're seeing a cover where there's going to be significant change in where the hands are on the weapon as the you know the hands are going to stay this close when the cover comes out the front uh, the top hand is going to slide up a bit and the bottom hand may may slide up to a little bit or it may stay. Whereas in the in the two in the two guards that we saw previous, the handedness will at least in the initial cover will probably um, more or less uh, stay stay the same, stay similar. But the, the they broad are pretty, pretty yeah. steady. Yeah, but the broad point is that is to understand that this one of the things that makes a spear complex in a unique way to every other weapon is that the handedness is utterly variable, which means that not only can the handedness of your enemy change in, an, in unpredictable ways that you have to constantly calculate, but your own handedness can change in ways you'll have to constantly recalculate. And so uh, that makes it a complex tool uh, uh, to use. Now, of course, you could just decline to change your hands very much and, and simplify yourself that way but of course then you're robbing yourself some of the versatility of the spear um you know kel likes to say in class that the spear can be you know uh it can be as short as a dagger or it can be as long as you know a lance a lance right and that's absolutely absolutely true depending on where your handedness is so yeah. a fascinating element of the spear that's that's not intuitive right uh, but they definitely no. you see it when you use it um, no, how, very how thorough changeable. coverage there, Aaron. Very yeah. good. Very good. Um, all right. I, I hope that's totally the last. Awesome. Um, uh, awesome. Yeah. All right. So I think that's, uh, I hope that's, that's enough of the, the contest. Yeah. <laughs> so when we get to the cover here, you, yeah. you've let's, got your arrow over it now. Mm -hmm. When we get to the next, uh, you know, first scholar, this shows you where all three of these come out. Yeah. And all three of them come out with your, uh, your left hand low and your right hand high. And your right hand is not high up in the air. It's just high enough to put the spear into the face or throat. Yeah. Um, in armor, you really want to target the openings that are less protected. And it's much more challenging to hit an armpit than it is to hit a face or a throat uh, with a spear point. Uh, with a dagger, when you're very close, you know, there's all kinds of things open to you. It's just a matter of where you apply the technique and how you shift your body. But with a spear, you really want everything to be concentrated on that point you're, you're literally your will is concentrated onto the spear point and if your spear point is set aside then you have to immediately shift your will to the foot of the spear so the foot of the spear becomes the most important thing in your universe mm -hmm. i mean this this may sound like a little bit religious but the reality of it is you have 
to focus your will through the weapon in your hands. Mm. This is how it works. It's not about a, you know, I, I do the technique this way and I shift to this degree and to that degree and blah, 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 blah. No, no. It's you want to put the point in the guy's face. You want his point to go away. To create that situation, you must deflect his spear, which is coverta, mm-hmm. um, and, and not necessarily bash it because that might put your point offline, but you want it excluded. Now, when we talk about covering in breve with a sword in two hands, we often say, yeah, look, look, your, your point is at their face or throat and your position of the cross and hilt or whatever tends to be over one hip because that covers you out to your elbow. This is an exaggeration of that exact stature. Mm. It's a much longer weapon, Mm -hmm. but the principle is the same. You have to cover all the way out to your elbow because your outside elbow is the the easiest target for them to reach. Mm -hmm. With a spear, obviously, they're trying to plunge it through your face or throat, but you want to do that to them Mm -hmm. in the process following not dying yourself. So making your cover is utterly critical, but making your cover in such a way that you can attack is the art yeah and get this like that yeah this, like uh, that one this middle time def, uh this 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 that's master stroke that's a temp- yeah exactly that's a temple that's a temple yeah, it's, uh, yeah. it's it, it's exchange of point, exchange of point. that's right that's it's right. very difficult from finestra mm-hmm. but from the other two positions a piece of cake all right who's our next victim connor with his perfect audio today <laughs> want to read this one and you're dulcet tones. Yeah, that's right. Both fingers crossed. How do I sound? Okay, so far. <laughs> Fabulous. We'll call your agent. If, if, if somebody's offering, three guards <laughs> here, just see, to the Ponte de Ferro, Ponte de Ferro, yeah, yeah. Sana, and right posta di finestra, Soprana? Should finish, their, should finish their actions with this play. This play ends their actions and their art. Look at me strike the opponent on their behalf. Thank you very much, Connor. Yeah, this is a a post di finestra soprana high above. Above. Actually, in the on on the way to the old sal in uh, on Dupont, there's a whenever I forget the the words sopra and soto, um, there's a there's a bar called the so the the sopra or whatever, and it's on the second story of a building. And I always think of that. It's like, oh, yeah, Sopras above. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Um, okay, yeah. So um, not really much for me to say here. The text said it. These three guards here that we saw, uh, Tutto Porte di Ferro, Mezza Porte di Ferro, and um, Finestra on the right, end their actions here. Um, you've seen they make the cover and they've um, put the point in their face. The only thing that... Um, that um, the only thing else I would say is that it's not obvious uh, to me exactly how important it is. Maybe Kel can comment on this, how important it is on which third to make your engagement uh, when you're coming in. Um, I tend to suspect that the most engagements are made on the first third. So which would make this um, this picture, um, you know, obviously it's not a photo, as we like to say, Um, this this picture would be he made the engagement on the first third and then this the the spear kind of slid down into the, the middle middle third here um but anyways um i tend to suspect that the engagement is going to be made on the first third and then it, this spear may slide down but there might be a case to be made of sometimes about making the engagement in the middle third i do not know i will comment on that mm, please uh, in the in the early days of our uh exploration of this particular stuff when i was still using you know my particular skills from my sea days to deal with spear um, it was far too easy for me to deal with uh any kind of thrust by using the first the four part let's just say the term four part for in whatever's in front of your hand mm-hmm. to use the four part of the spear to make my covers as opposed to trying to cover in the center mm. between your hands with a long weapon, it's very difficult to allow that much time to go by to make your cover. And this is something that was a Bobism for a long time now. For those of you that aren't familiar 
what a bobism is. A fellow named Bob Sharon dove deeply into Fiori in the early 2000s, although he had absolutely no Italian skills whatsoever. Um, he dove deeply into it based on his rather extensive and, quite frankly, much more talented understanding of uh, combat than I had at the time from both of our times in the SCA. He's, he's just really a natural fighter. But his translations were based on what he could do versus what Fiori said to do. And they thus they became Bobisms, and we've moved away from most of them. There, there are very, very few that we still even bother with without acknowledging that they are Bobisms. Anyways, this particular one, he was absolutely adamant that you had to cover with the middle of the spear. And waiting to make that cover with the middle mm. of the spear got an awful lot of us stabbed unnecessarily. Yeah, that's late. So once I pointed out to him that I'd really rather not get stabbed, so I'm going to do it this way. And he said, yeah, sure, show me how. Well, as it turns out, I was a lot more experienced with spear than he was. So uh, when we made the covers with the forepart of the spear, all of us could do it. The entire room full of us. Even if we had never used a spear before every one of us made the cover so my point is this image shows the after effect of the cover and placing the point this is the finale of the play by making the cover with the and you notice i don't say perry i'm really adamant about that because perry repost is not in this play it's in the left side place <clears throat> When you make a cover with the fore part of the spear, regardless of where your hands are placed, whether they're uh, like knee distance apart or whether they're shoulder distance apart, you will make a cover and end up with your point on line. If you try to make the cover between your hands like a quarter staff cover, uh, which is a longer weapon, by the way, it's 11 foot as opposed to seven foot, um, you will not be able to make it in a timely manner and it will the rushing to get there will force you mm. to make errors in your point placement. And quite frankly, the whole exercise is about stuffing your point into your opponent's face mm -hmm. and not getting stabbed while doing so. So when you think it through, the four part, as Aaron says, the part in front of your, your forward hand is where you make your cover. It's kind of like the difference between the punta and the matza of a sword where you want to make yeah. most of your covers there but you also want to make most of your strikes there because that's where the center of percussion yeah. lives and it's no different with the spear you can make a, a spear cover more easily with the fore part of the spear than you can with what's between your hands because what's between your hands being struck will reverberate in both your hands whereas having it struck in the fore part may or may not have any effect on your hands at all mm -hmm. because of well it's a spear shaft it's not a rock mm -hmm. right it will it will flex it will vibrate the ones that we use with the steel tips on them they're pretty solid but at the force we use them they bend when you mm -hmm. watch the videos that ross took in high definition you will see those spear shafts and those polax shafts bend mm -hmm. and they're inch and a half thick ash select ash mm -hmm. they're not rattan they're not bamboo they flex it's pretty cool mm -hmm. and so from actual experience and long study i will say mm -hmm. you are correct aaron it is the four part of the spear that you make your cover with i mean if that is so uh that would also fit with our experience from learning about um, making covers in largo with the sword in two hands where we wanted to make the cover at least initially uh, we wanted to make the cover with the fighting at the tips because distance equals time that's right right and so if distance equals time that's not specific to the sword that's a observation about the universe and so it should also fit for the spear uh, as well aristotle's seventh uh, chapter, land, what is it, seventh parable, whatever he calls them, I can't remember. It's been a while since I looked at him, but Aristotle's seventh um, yeah, physic. All right, and 39 VD, uh, here we have the counter to the play just before. 
Um, so who we got? Graham. Lay it on us. Hi. Uh, this is the counter of the three Masters of Lance who finished their play in the action we have just seen. Here's how the counter is performed. When the Masters think they have pushed my Lance out of line, I turn my weapon around and strike with the heel. This is why the heel of my Lance is capped with an iron point. The plays of these Masters don't worry me much. <laughs> Thank you very much, Graham. Okay. So, uh, so here we go. Um, here we have, I think... Uh, now that I'm looking at it again, I think the... Well, anyways, I'm not sure exactly what this picture was trying to you would you would imagine that this would be the point the the, the end of the spear with the heel on it right to, to fit the text but it looks uh, i can't really see any point on it but this this end doesn't really have a uh, so that's kind of yeah Your that's an, yeah, in other words? that's a good that's a good question yeah let's see uh oh fuck the paris fucks it and oh there's only the paris <laughs> oh well <laughs> well that's not going to be of help <laughs> Um, but anyways, it doesn't matter. So um, what the text says is pretty clear. When the masters think they have pushed my lance out of line, I turn my weapon and strike with the heel. Uh, wow, well, the code! Don't look with the the heel of the lance. And this is why the heel is capped with iron. So um, the basic principle, of course, being that when uh, when the attacker is giving the thrust giving the the point as they feel their point being pushed off the center line they're going to respond proportionately by bringing their uh the heel of the spear back in and attempting to either strike with the heel or um, perform a useful uh play with the heel we've seen lots of useful plays with the pommel and with the heel of the poleaxe the pommel of the sword and the, uh, the heel of the poleaxe and the sword in two hands uh the sword and armor plays and the action armor plays so we're already familiar with some things we can do those things we can also do with the spear like you know i, I put the uh put the end of the spear into the box as Kel likes to say and get some keys and disarm the weapon and things like that you can also just hit them with it and um i'd like to point yeah. out one thing here mm -hmm. This is this is a moment just like in wrestling hmm. uh, or in the Copa de Viano, where you use the energy of your uh, opponent against him. Mm -hmm. You uh, uh, you know that your point's going offline, and your mind has to be flexible enough mm -hmm. to realize that things aren't going your way in that split second. Mm -hmm. So the point's not going to hit. Well, immediately add some energy to it. So your point's going to your right, add some energy to it with your left hand, and you'll bring your your foot, your your, your heel, uh, Cal says the heel, mm -hmm. as Aldo pointed out a couple weeks ago. Uh, the heel, you'll bring your heel into line, and that creates a beat. So if you have a beat, you're going to set him aside in some way, as he set you aside originally. And this is literally like a heartbeat or two mm -hmm. difference. It's so fast, yeah. and then you slam him. You either you either work the box as as uh, mm -hmm. Aaron Mo pointed out, or you slam him in the side of the head. Because when you do your beat with the heel of the spear, it's going to turn him to his left. He's already working that way. He's got some energy going that way because that's how he makes his cover. I mean, you would. Mm -hmm. So you know that he's going to try to do that, and if he's managed it on you then you immediately add a little bit of energy with your lower hand, which is left in this case, and increase his, his uh, white space. So then you've got an opportunity to slam him in the side of the head or work his wrist or work his elbow or any of those number of things. Myself, if you beat somebody's um, spear point aside, you're going to probably go off their vambrace and come up with so you're going to be taking the point of their spear offline or maybe the heel but more likely the point because the point's what's going to threaten you but you take that offline and that gives you an opening along the right side of their body well it's foolish to go for the leg because geometrically it's so mm -hmm. much farther away but if you slam someone in the side of the head or in the right eye with the butt of your spear 
you can pretty much be sure they're not going to continue in the next moment. There will be a pause from their end of the mm -hmm. fight, whereas you're not. You're in command mm -hmm. of that moment. Mm -hmm. So uh, tactically, this is a very simple play to work with if you have the dexterity mm -hmm. to accept that your spear point is being pushed offline. Mm -hmm. If you try to fight it with counter pressure, you are right. stabbed in the, stabbed in the face. That's right. That's right. So and, for those yeah. of you that yeah. haven't had the opportunity to play with spears, um, don't try to wrestle at the spear. Just change. Just go to the next thing. Yeah. Like that, everything else. When you're when you're exactly. wrestling without weapons, things aren't working. Go to the next thing. Yeah. Don't build castles out of shit. Uh, sand castles out of shit, as Brian likes That's to say. That's a good one. That's yeah, a good yeah. One. Um, uh, yeah, and and that brings us um, to another element of spear, which is um, uh, which which always confounds me because uh, w whenever I do it, which is that um, though it seems like you may be in a place where you might want to move to Stretto, um, because the light, the spear is variable, the handedness of the spear is variable, you can still very much be in Largo. So. In this particular case, just because we brought the butt around, right, doesn't mean that we can't bring the point back around, right? And especially if things have had had worked the way that Kel described, where the 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 heel of the spear created a moment of pain compliance, which added some time for us to continue to act while this uh, while our enemy was stunned, we might decide to use that time to bring the bring the heel back bring the point back online and thrust again while still maintaining the distance so that's and you know or you know we could have chosen to go in to go into strato and maybe try some some work in the box or maybe even attempt an entry we could have chosen that but we could just as easily in this moment this archetypical moment here continue in in Largo. so subtlety absolutely i can't think of a better word to describe this really truly uh uh what's going on here yeah the yeah. really classic response to this is they took a poke at you they set your point aside maybe maybe you were probing you know whatever it, it happens maybe you're probing and they took a stronger uh, a more committed mm. cover than than you were prepared for so it set your point offline well if you were probing, then you're not really committed to begin with. So you've swung the spear up with a step, change feet, either you, you step back or or you step just half a little bit closer, you know, like uh, an acrosari as opposed to a passing step. Um, from that moment where you've struck them and stunned them, you can take a passing step back with your forward foot, the left in this case, and slam your spear, the, the forepart of the spear, down upon their upper arm, on their vambrace. Oof. It will drive their point completely out of line and plant it like a target bullseye into their face. And I have done this more than once. It is not a difficult thing to do. The most difficult part of this entire play is being relaxed enough to allow yourself to be set aside and change sides. If yeah. you fight with tension, if you fight with yeah. attempts at strength, you are going to be defeated by your own mistakes. Mm -hmm. And this is all in armor, remember, right? It would be hard enough. God knows it'd be hard enough to do out, uh, outside of armor. Uh, but oh, with all, with all mighty, of this in armor, mighty, jeepers, mighty painful. Jeepers. Out of armor, so. this would be broken arms. No, no, but I mean the the actions are are subtle. It'd be difficult enough oh, yeah. if you I weren't mean, encumbered. If you had, if if you wanted yeah. to train this out yeah. of armor, just in like fencing garb, mm. and and uh, used a light, really lightweight spear, you know, with both mm. ends, like the like the ones we have in in uh, or we had in trial that are now in storage. But you'll have again soon. Mm -hmm. They're six foot long and they've got like furniture feet feet on them. They're not mm -hmm. gonna badly hurt you unless you have no equipment on uh, which i say specifically because i was unfortunate to injure um <clears throat> sorry i'm choking here uh, the last mojito is, is empty and dry so i get <laughs> um oh i grew i grew some cuban mint it's so wonderful curly mint into the mojitos Ooh. anyway oh yeah 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 anyway 
Um, so Leander was playing spear with me in, on fight night, and, and we were trying not to, you know, go very hard because, you know, they do hit. They're, they're solid shafts. They do hit fairly hard. And he zigged when he should have zagged, and I tagged him, like, in the sternum, knocked him down. And he ended up with a lightly cracked rib. It wasn't bad. Like, oh, so I didn't know that. Up or anything. Oh, yeah, yeah. So what does he do? He gets back up, and he looks at me and says, well, then. He goes in the, in the armory and puts on his coat of plates. <laughs> And comes back out and continues the fight. You know, I love the guy to death. But the the fact of the matter is, when you make a bad mistake with a spear, it sucks. Yeah. When you make a bad mistake with a pole axe, you you fall down and you feel pain. Yeah. Like I don't like playing pole axe in just fencing garb, even at half speed, because if one of you zigs when you should zag, it, it's bad news. I know that yeah. you know several people have wanted to play pole axe with me at half speed, and I'm really careful about who I want to do that with because if I even if I do the right thing, I not can't necessarily pull the blow. Mm -hmm. Whereas with a spear, I can generally pull the blow, but even then, he walked clean into something that I didn't expect. He did, he did exactly the wrong thing. Naturally enough for someone that has less experience with a particular weapon. And now he will never make that mistake again. <laughs> but you know, it's great that he, this is the quality of an Emma scholar. As far as I'm concerned, he picked his ass up off the ground and went fine. Went in and got his coat of place, strapped it over his, his padded coat. And we continued the fight. It took a couple of minutes, but you know, we continued the fight because he's a scholar of Emma, and, and we're just not yeah. going to give up that easily. And there was beer in the Scott, fridge, I'm sure. Which, so well, everything was, was of everything was fine. <laughs> although, I, although I understand Raquel gave him when you're full afterwards. Oh, I, I'm sure, no doubt. <laughs> uh, all right. So, um, with uh, with that said, we're on to the second set of masters. Uh, oh, and... I do have a question about. Oh, that yes. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, please. Um, it's probably just the drawing, but it looks like the scholar is striking from the inside of the Zugador's box, I guess. So, like, it's on the... Yeah. Yeah, it, it looks like it's on the, the, the other side of the wrist than we are. Is okay. that correct? This, or is, is, that this, this is the follow-on from the beat. So, it, what you have to imagine here is that there's a beat of um his spear point so the the zugadori spear point has to be driven offline with a beat from the left with the heel of the spear so the counter master is countering his potential poke in the eye so he has driven the zugadori off to the zug's left and then followed through with a slam under his wrist to the face because that was the most viable target for the uh, for the uh, countermaster uh, the the just the play I described afterwards is a much easier play to do where you shove the guy offline with your heel and then you slam him uh, over the van brace with the opposite side with the spear point so you can plant your actual spear point instead of striking him with the butt uh, bluntly speaking I have nailed people in the face and i've been nailed in the face with the butt of pole axes and spears and as annoying as it is if you see it coming it doesn't suck if you have well because we always have visors right we, we never fight open face if i had an open face it'd be a totally different story but the number of times i've been struck in the face with anything from uh, a metal gauntlet to the haft of a of a spear or a pole axe um I couldn't count on all my hands and toes, and none of them have done anything more than annoy me. Where it really hurts is where you don't see it coming. That's a blind side that mm. knocks you down like a car wreck. Um, where you, you know, like you're facing something and you think one thing's going to happen, and then suddenly you catch the opposite thing in the head. It, it because sure. your whole structure, your breathing, everything is is based on what you expect to happen. And when the unexpected happens, it knocks the wind out of you and rattles your skull. And you get to see all those pretty colored Tweety birds, just like in the cartoons. Mm -hmm. And I'm not kidding. I'm the people say get your bell rung. No, 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 no. It's Tweety birds. And then as you start to come out of the gray zone, 
your buddies are, are you know, like over top. You're going, hey, how many fingers do you see? And you go, where's your hand? <laughs> it's not funny. It's not funny. <laughs> I've, been, I've lived it, and I don't recommend anyone else to do it. Yeah. I try to teach all of you so that none of you have that happen to you. Because quite frankly, those are experiences I never wanted to have. Or as some people say, why does life keep teaching me lessons I have no wish to learn? <laughs> Sounds yeah. quite yeah. unsafe to receive. Okay, does that does that answer your question though? I I believe so. So you're saying that the so after sorry, so the defense with the butt is to strike the opponent's spear and then you go in. So yeah, so you want action. that you want that pulling out of the way before you counterattack. Right. Yeah. Right. Because so you're that's not the threat. Yeah. This You're not is just like putting I say, it offline as you come in to strike, and just it's it's really yeah. hard because you you beat and you counter strike. Um, it's always a beat from the left, always, always, always. So he's making yeah. this cover from the left, and uh, whether he was using the the, the forward uh, point of the spear, you know, above the above the forward hand, or using the lower part of the spear below the low hand. In this case, he's he's used the lower part to set aside the point that was threatening his face and um, then followed through with a strike underneath the wrist of the uh, Zug. And and it happens quite often. When you set the point aside, their hands will still be hanging up in the air and uh, you can slide that point right into their face because yeah, hitting somebody point. square in the face, uh, even if it's a visor, hitting them square in the face is much more annoying than um, hitting down into the, say, their ear or part of the edge of their helmet or whatever. And most of us play with bassinets. So a, a bassinet has pretty fair coverage from basically your cheek line down to the base of your neck and jawline. And, and that can absorb a lot of energy, although, although it's unpleasant it's not going to black you or brown you out, you know, whereas uh, in the face plate, if somebody catches you in the eyes, like right over your nose, depending on the face plate you have, if you have a hand skull, it'll never hit you that way. It'll just glance off. But it, uh, a lot of us are wearing um, uh, clap visors type things, which are rounded face or globose bassinet visors as they're, as they're more technically called by, you know, museum type people. Um, that type of visor sucks up energy like there's no tomorrow. It's like hit being being hit by, you know, Mike Tyson with a 16-ounce boxing glove. It just sucks. Bye bye. It's really bad. Yeah. Um, I mean, when you see it coming, you, you go, oh no, you know. In that moment, you could kind of move to alleviate some of the energy, which basically is not so much ducking as trying to move your energy backwards with the strike coming towards you so you can alleviate a lot of the energy of it that way but when you don't see it coming at all especially if you've been turned sideways oh oh awful just awful does that help uh yeah i believe so thank you cool cool uh bd here i've got a couple of quick questions sure sure uh, yep. First of all, a comment. Um, uh, I'd like to thank you, Kel and Aaron, because the more I learn from listening, the less I will have to learn from major injuries or concussions. So that's, that's <laughs> and we, we're, and we, we hope. both win by doing that. Yeah. Both of us, as, as free scholars, have done our jobs by making you a better scholar. Indeed. And that is my goal. I don't want to make you. I, I'm not here to make you a free scholar. I make. I'm here to make you a good scholar, because once you're a good scholar, you will become a free scholar simply by being a good scholar the uh, the second point is that we we see this play in the uh, uh, staff and dagger versus spear and we also see it in the mounted section uh, and then the third point is in the staff and dagger versus spear there's actually a point where it almost looks like fury de is telling us to faint with the cue with the butt and then strike with the point mm. Mm. i don't know about that I yeah know. so the I... the faint like if I, I can see the getting us getting struck by the butt when you're unarmored could potentially be fatal or significantly debilitating but in armor I'm not sure how much of a faint you could generate with the butt you know what I mean to make to, to, to well, draw can, the you can, reaction you can, you can generate one hell of a faint but whether it's gonna make any difference hmm. in your final strike because hmm. you can faint 
uh, what do you say? You can wave your hands. Mm. Oh, what was that song? There was a song in the 70s about, there was an Australian tune about trying to learn to throw a boomerang. My boomerang won't come back. I wave my stick all over the fa- place and practice while I'm black in the face. I'm a big disgrace to the Aborigine race. My boomerang won't come back. And finally, in the third chorus, the, the wizard tells him, well, my son, the first thing you've got to do is throw it. <laughs> you know, like the, the point is, it's not about making the deceptions. It's about actually doing it. Make a deception and you follow through. If you just wave things around, eventually after two or three waves, whoever you're waving at is going to go, yeah, okay, and give you a smoke in the face. Uh, I'm sorry, but, you know, I'm older than you guys, so that song just immediately came to my mind because it's hilarious. If you ever get a chance, look it up on YouTube because the video that goes with it is hilarious. Anyway, this business about uh, a lot of faints and whatnot, Fiori's big on one faint. One. If, If you see him talk about, you know, and I do this thing or that thing, most of his actions to constrain a fight are provocations of stance, of posta. Mm. Mm. Uh, agree. Agree. Very, very few of his are actions of uh, blade work, whereas things like cavitation, uh, mm-hmm. uh, collazione in Italian and Bolognese stuff is huge. But that's also very particular to the sword in one hand and occasionally the sword, or two swords in, in, in each hand and in case of rape here. But uh, the provocations where you faint uh, are not huge. They're, uh, they're not so big in Fiori. Yeah, he doesn't it's talk like, about them too much. Yeah, no, he's, he's pretty direct. He's yeah. pretty direct. Yeah. There's one, there's one play in, um, okay, in the Polak section, for example, uh, posted to Donna on the left, he says, where I make a little intrigue with the axe, and then I step backward as you counter, as, mm. you, as you follow through with your attack. And, you know, and that's, that is the most clear, mm. single um, faint, as we would call it in later texts, uh, that you will see in Fiori. And that's with a pole axe in the most bizarre position. Now, I like to do this kind of stuff with a spear, uh, in in, uh, in Finestra, I've practiced Finestra to the point where I feel like I have a, a handle on it. I yet, have yet to feel competent. I'm certainly not comfortable. But because we're not playing with deadly weapons, I'm willing to risk uh, taking a strike because I want to learn. Um, it's not something you can necessarily do in period unless you had blunted uh, tools to practice with and even then you know y- your teeth are going to count afterwards um, you know the, the the part where he says and I'll strike you in the face with a button I'll knock four teeth out uh, which we call the spitting chicklets play um, well that's not an uncommon thing one of the renaissance masters or no 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 not renaissance early modern masters said you know to uh, a particular regional king you know what's the sign of a master well he has one eye and no teeth think that through yeah um don't ask um don't ask brian or dave to smile um all right <laughs> so we're on to the next uh, the next side of the uh of the master uh, the masters the next um set the masters on the left side so the first, the first one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a break for a sec. Okay. My glass is empty. Go refill your glass. Um, all right. So 40, 40 RA. Um, who is next? Uh, Mark, would you like to read this one for us? We are three guards. We are three guards on the Reverso side. And the first, the Dante El Chingaro. Guards on the Mandrito side do exactly what we do on the Reverso side. They pass out of line by first performing an offline accrocemento with the foot that is forward as usual. All of us 
cards on the Mandrito or Reversal side come together with a thrust after the parry, since the Lance cannot deliver any other offense. Thank you very much, Mark. Um, all right. So some important stuff to start off here. Um, the guard on the other side, on the right side, was Tutta Porta di Ferro. This guard is called Dente di Cingaro. Um, this kind of highlights, to me anyway, it highlights that we ought not get to, uh, too hung up on the names of the guards. You know, uh, there's, a, there's, a good, there's a good tradition of scholarship at Emma that considers the names of the guards principally mnemonic for, for, for memory purposes. I think there's probably something to that. Lots of people at Emma that hold that view. Um, so this guard is the Boar's Tooth guard, even though it's exactly the same as the Tuta Porta de Ferro on the other side. It is what it is. Furious called it this, so that's that's what that's what he's called it. Guards on the Mendrito side do exactly what we do on the Reverso side, and then he describes that again. And then all of the guards come together with a thrust after the parry, since the lance can only strike this way. So what does this mean? So this seems to be uh, in contradiction to um, a text that we read just a couple plays ago when he's talking about guards um, can't should oh. should um, uh, on the right side they can um, uh, cover and strike and on the left side they can beat and uh, and, and cut so I don't want to litigate this right now but I, I do want to um, want to suggest that Part of the conversation that we have with the with, with respect of the nature of guards is very much influenced by sidedness, that's true, by handedness, and by the nature of the weapon. So uh, this is a big debate here. Uh, and I, as I said, I don't want to get into it. I want to make some progress, um, but it's an interesting one. And um, those three those three things, the sidedness of where the weapon's held, the handedness on the weapon, and the nature of the weapon itself will inevitably end up being major point, uh, points of contention for various theories as to what weapons can do on which side and what not. All right? With the spear, we're looking at, again, a weapon that has a variable handedness, and in, at least in the way that Fury is using it, uh, seems to be using it according to the pictures, if the pictures mean anything, then the um, symmetrical human body uh, has the spear with the the hand high on the side that it's that it's on. So the way that Fiore is holding it, and the dimensions of the spear obviously are identical in these pictures, whether on the right or the left. So isn't that interesting? Um, but broadly speaking, um, so again sidestepping that debate. He says here, the action is going to be the same as the action in Tutta Porta de Ferro, which is to pass uh, offline and with the foot that's forward and then make the cover. Any questions about that? Great. We already kind of covered it before. Again, in, in this case, he's refused. In the other, in the other guard, uh, in Tutta, he wasn't refused. But he's holding the spear very much on one side which I suggest is um, a tactical strategy to control the possible places that the enemy can attack you. If you're the spear is on the left side here, he's unlikely to attack you on the left side. So that simplifies your, your action. It's, a, it's more tactical speaking, it's a provocation to constrain possible yeah. attacks. Excellent. Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, okay. Moving on to the next guy. All right. 40RB. Here we go. Which is uh, Vera Croce, True Cross with the Spear. The number of people over the years that have said to me, Fury hasn't got a clue about Spear. Look at this play. Not a clue. He'd be dead. Makes me laugh. It just <sighs> makes me laugh. Because they're talking about their experience in some form of LARP or SCA or, you know, 
uh, not battle the nations, obviously, because they're using the thrust. Or as, or as the Russians say, no pricks allowed. <laughs> uh, um, it's, uh, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's kind of comical because anyone that has only looked at the pictures could possibly say that. If yeah. you've read the text and you've worked through the entire material, this makes perfect sense. And yet, for somebody who's walking in and trying to find a flaw from a standpoint of zero knowledge of the of the material, um, this particular play is one that I've had the most discussions about over the years. Mm. And, and and the simple answer is, well, what do you think happens next? Oh, he stabs him in the hip. Well, what do you think of the guy with the crown was to move backwards and swing his spear into the other guy's spear and then ram it through his eyes? What? Well, how do you get that? And then I point to the text above. They say, well, I don't know what it says. Well, that's because you haven't studied it. Therefore, your opinion is invalid. <laughs> uh, I'm, a, I'm a prick, so I can get away with it. Uh, yeah, and that's and that's why you're not allowed in at the Battle of Nations. Um, uh, I, I don't think many of us would be. <laughs> we're well, too, we're too played, elitist, quote unquote. Um, I have I have played with a few people from the the uh, the, the Russian or the Ukrainian Belarusian guys that play out in Mississauga. Uh, we used to have them come to the camping event, and they were like, you know, like we just beat the shit out of those guys. Well, we you know, this is what they're telling people online. We'd be to live shit out of you. And then when somebody brought that back around to us from, say, Germany or or Czechoslovakia or whatever, said, yeah, they played their game and, you know, we didn't stab them in the face and kill them. <laughs> yeah. I think, what? But you can't thrust. No, they can't thrust. They want them to play with us. You know, like, duh. Yeah, anyway. and speaking of fair play, Amber, would you like to read the text for us? Please and thank you. Are you with us, Amber? Oh, if you're talking, we can't hear you. Mm -hmm. Oh, we might have an audio issue. Uh, I'll read it. I'll okay, read it. go ahead. We'll get you to the next okay. one, Amber. Amber, remember to send me the questions you had thought, right? Oh, uh, she 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 left. She's she's critiquing her audio issue. Oh, and I skipped okay. over you, Kel. I apologize. You, you read this no, one. Pff, no, no problem. I'll, re I'll read it. I'm waiting in Poste de Vera Croce. You are too close to me. Play fair. I pass backwards with my front foot, the right, while beating your lance out of the line to my right. My point won't miss while yours will. Awesome. Thank you very much, Kel. Okay. 40 RB. All right. So this one, like Kel said, um, this uh, posta, this posta, this uh, play gets a lot of attention, um, gets a lot of scholarly chewing and gnashing of teeth and whatever. So let's, let's look at it a bit. First of all, let's look at the posta. Um, and again, I'm going to just point out these, these conversations, these debates. I'm not going to litigate them here. Um, but I want you to be aware of them. So the first uh, thing to note is that this is not symmetrical to the play on the other side, at least not obviously by the picture. And this is interesting because what we have here with these two, two sets of masters is we have two posters. We start with two posters that look the same and end with two posters that look the same, right? Identity uh, teaching Gato here, though name different, looks exactly like, or looks almost identical to, to the Porta de Ferro, and Finestra on the left looks, well, is almost the same as Finestra on the right. But here, um, in the middle, we have, in the with the masters on the right side, we have Mezza Porta di Ferro, looking like Tutta Porta di Ferro with the sword. But then we don't have the same guard, at least not obviously, on the left we have something else and that else is we have we have true cross vera croce and this guard we're familiar with from the sword and the axe and this guard vera croce looks very similar 
to the Vere Croce guards in the sword and the axe. So what, what that means is that it's unlikely that this drawing is a mistake. It's called Vero Croce. Other guards that look exactly like it elsewhere in the book are called Vero Croce. It's probably meant to be drawn this way. So this has sparked a discussion as to what, what this guard is or what we should think about this middle position on the left side. And some take the view that we should just not we should just consider this perhaps a mistake and just mirror the guard. So we have Metsuporte de Ferro on the left, uh, on the right, and on the left, and, can, and chalk this up to an anomaly, or say, yeah, okay, sure, maybe you could hold the spear in Vero Croce from the Sword of the Axe, you know, whatever. That's that's one view. Another view is to say that no, this is in fact drawn very purposefully, and Fiore doesn't have, for a reason, he doesn't have this guard repeated on the left. And this play is specific to this guard. And there's other opinions in between and, and, and whatever. So that's that's an interesting scholarly discussion surrounding the mere posta here. Okay. And then there's a circumstance of the play, what's going on here. So again, a running theme in this whole treatment of Fiori we've been doing these last 20 plus weeks has been the debate and often conflict uh, tension rather is a better word between the text and the pictures and one of those one of the tensions in the pictures has always been perspective right and you know whether or not we can look at an image say you know whatever this or that or whatever image and we can make judgments about how close or far one figure is from the other right that's been an always an open an open question so in this image we actually have a play that's true we have a play but we have a play where the figures match the text insofar as they seem to be drawn intentionally close together and that's very interesting that's very interesting and noteworthy so the play again here is the guys waiting in Vero Croce, but the Zugdori is too close to me, and not in a sassy way, right? He's too close to me. The master, the the uh, yeah, the master, is going to pass backwards with his front foot, which is the right. So he's refused here, but that's the right foot still the front foot. He's going to pass backwards and bring his lance online as he passes backwards and effect, affecting a beat right affecting a, an exchange of perhaps an exchange of points a better way to put it so he's going to do the play that we're sort of familiar with this exchange of point situation he's going to attempt to end in that way but he's doing it in the reverse and not going forward so isn't that cool it's very simple really yeah. he's facing a much longer reach weapon Yeah, and and that's also that's also a potential factor in here as well, is that you know what? It's, it's a no, yeah. no. It's a critical factor, not potential. So critical. so so you're reading Kel that the 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 lance in this case is physically you're longer than the. You're too close, so I have to make more space. That's the hint. Oh, you're too close. Oh well, whatever. You're oh come on, play fair now. Let right. me show you how to play fair. And he does show you how to play fair. <laughs> right. He just passes right back, brings his point on the line, and makes the cover, and, uh, and, and there it is. And strangely enough, this works equally well with poleaxe or with sword. Mm. They're too close with mm -hmm. the sword. You do the same footwork. Mm -hmm. This is alternative footwork to make true cross happen. Mm -hmm. The crossing itself and the... Um, a threat that it creates are the same in all of the weapons, whether mm -hmm. shortened sword or pole axe or spear. Mm -hmm. It's great. It's this awesome. Is, yeah. This is concurrence that works backwards and forwards. Mm -hmm. If you don't 
work through the entire manuscript, mm. you don't get the whole story. It's critical. Mm. Yeah, and we've seen a couple in a couple places a fury making plays with a pass backwards, like in the Largo uh, section of the Sword in Two Hands. We have the um, the the leg shot play where he he avoids the leg and strikes the head. Um, there's probably a couple other places as well, but it's something to remind ourselves that, you know, uh, it's not always moving forward that we have to we have to react. We can pass backwards as well and still gain aggressive advantages, right? This guy isn't giving up anything when he passes back. You know, he's giving up some <laughs> some space, I suppose. He's passing back, but it's not a you know passing back isn't a a non-aggressive uh, thing. Um, quite the contrary. And that can be counterintuitive sometimes to people. Um, and I, that's something that we emphasize a lot on the floor when we're looking at um, passing back. We want it, people to be striking as true and as aggressive going backwards as they are going forwards. And um, yeah, that's something to learn. Um, okay, let's um, move on. All right, Finestra on the left. Uh, 40 RC in the Getty. Oh, this is so hard. Yeah. So yeah. hard. Yeah. Uh, Amber, uh, how's your audio? Can you hear me? This hey, time? there we, we go. We can hey. indeed. Welcome we got back. you. All right. Let me try and bring that into closer view. Let me uh, zoom in. Ah, there we go. I am ready and left posta de finestra, and if I don't hit you with a thrust, consider it a good bargain. I will keep my point high and my arms low, pass back with my foot offline to the reverso side, while giving you a thrust to the face, which you'll have to which you'll have no defense. We three masters can all perform the play that comes next. If you are once at the receiving end of it, you will not want to try it again. <laughs> Oh, Fury, you sassy devil. All right. Thank you very much, Amber. It's like uh, Muhammad Ali giving the little punch in the face as he stepped back from people, eh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Take that with you. <laughs> All right. So, uh, oh, this is such massive sass. Pass back. Pass with my um, blah, blah, blah. I'll keep my point high, and I'll pass with my back foot offline to the reverso side while giving you a thrust to the face. Really yeah. Can we draw a comparison between this and what we do with the pole axe from Finestra on the left? Um, no. That's a good question. I don't yeah. think so. Mm. Yeah, you, Can... Okay. Yeah, yeah. You pass back, Finestra on the left, you pass mm. back, and you drop it in their face. Um, yes, there is a, a mm. great similarity in footwork. Mm. Uh, the weight of the uh, spearhead coming down short on top of the incoming blow or thrust is a big difference between that and what mm. the lands can drop on it. But there is a distinct similarity. I agree with mm. you. Um, the big thing, though, is the footwork. The footwork is identical. Yeah. Yeah, so so he's, he, he seems to be saying that instead of in the previous play, which you're passing back with the, the lead foot, which is this guy, you're going to be passing back with the back foot to the reverso side. No. And so is, is he talking about this foot? Yeah, read through it again. Yeah, he says, he says uh, pass offline to the reverso side with my back foot. It says back foot. Hmm. That's interesting. To my back hand. For us. Is, that, is this a mistranslation? A mistranslation. Because if I, you pass yeah. back, if you pass back with, I was with gonna your say, back, yeah, with your back foot, that's weird. You're going to be very wide space to be that's very weird. difficult to make the cover. This and makes sense. This is what like it's like is, in previous. This yeah. is a this is a mistranslation. With my back foot, uh, sort of mirrors. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, so what what I what I thought it was was the same footwork as the last play. Without we have a pass a pass back with the with this foot here. Um, 
I've I've done this one with the same pa, uh, yeah. the same footwork as the pole axe, and it works it works very well because you end up with your point yeah. on line. Whereas mm -hmm. we do with a pole axe, mm -hmm. it drops their axe down, mm -hmm. brings your point on line, but it also allows you to turn your axe over and smash down on them. Mm -hmm. Whereas with a spear, it wouldn't make any difference. Mm -hmm. I'll have to I'll have to remember to bring this up with somebody. Interesting. Interesting. All right. Yeah. So well, let's just ask Aldo. There yeah. are there are issues with um, in the armored section, as Aldo pointed out to me, like more than hmm. 10, 12 years ago in the armored section. There were two cases where Tom had the person, the, the bodies wrong. Hmm. Like he had transposed the him and the he type of thing, like uh, uh, mm. the, the Zug and the, and the master or the countermaster, whereas Tom had transposed the two and nobody seemed to catch it. Mm. And we talked about it and supposedly it was sorted out in the second edition. But mm. in this particular one, no, if you just, if you take your mm -hmm. back foot yeah, it can't be more, bad. make an acrosari backwards, no, it doesn't See. work. It's not a pass either. Put the two little brats in so anyway, yeah, all right, cool. That's that's some good fodder for us later. Um, yeah, all right. So so um, the the broad takeaway I would say for us here uh, at least is that the defense that we saw from Finestra on the right side going forward can also be done uh, at least analogously going back. Although of course it's left. it's harder. <laughs> the other one's hard it's, to do it, this is it, harder it's very challenging yeah. the big advantage to this particular uh, position is if if you do this with your spear high uh, and there's it like at least higher than theirs and this is why you see the zug with it at chin level and the uh, countermaster with it at eye level or eyebrow level um, if you come down on their spear as you pass back it opens their face to the thrust. If you were to do this with a, a retreat with your left foot, you wouldn't have any leverage to come down on top of their spear. So that's that's the reality of the mistranslation. Um, you know, like Tom did really amazing work, and he is uh, a very good translator. Uh, unfortunately, he has absolutely no concept of leverage, even though he pretends to, uh, to, to understand how the Ronco works in the 17th century, which is a 12-foot pole axe. Um, he really doesn't get it because he's never played with it in any seriousness in armor. He doesn't fight in armor. He never has. So anything he's played with has always been lightweight weapons at half speed. And it, for him, it's, it, it, it made perfect sense because he could make the play work to his satisfaction. But we've talked this through a number of times on, on uh, other internal boards. And sorry, no. Yeah. And, um, and last but not least, uh, we have, uh, just as we um, come to the close of our evening, we have the last play of the Masters on the uh, left side, which is Folio 40 RD in the Getty. I'll read this one. Here ends the play of the lands. I perform this from the reverse of side as I trouble myself with their plays. The three guards we have just seen are mindful they shouldn't fail, whether their lance is long or short, because these guards make such strong defenses that they can parry and strike in a single step. The counter of this thrust is easily performed. When the point of the lance is broken, always turn the lance around and strike with the heel. This can uh, very well suffice as to the lance. And there we go. We have the, the final play. So Fiore more or less repeating what he, what he told us in the last section. Both sides seem to end in similar ways. Whether or not you're making the, the, the uh, cover passing backwards or going forwards, you're ending up with something uh, similar to what we see in the image. Um, and as Kel and I have suggested, it's likely that um, technique wise, we're aiming to make the initial engagement in okay. the first I'll third. I'll stop you there. I'll stop. I know where you're going with this. Mm. <clears throat> this is the source of the Bobism. 
this Bob picture? Gen yes, jo Bob generalized that making it between your hands gave you an advantage to get your point on line mechanically with leverage. <clears throat> In this particular case, stepping back and making your cover between your hands does make sense because it brings your hands much higher than it would if one hand was low and one hand was high, mm. as it were, on the right side. This particular cover should be made between both of your hands, the same oh, in pole oh, axe, okay. a thrust and pole axe. So if you make this between your hands, you can use that cover as a pivot point or a fulcrum to swing your point in line. So instead of having to deal with a, a beat of um, the heel, this allows you to bring your point on line without um, beating their weapon aside, but up. So you're talking specifically in the cases where you're making the cover stepping backwards? When you make the cover stepping backwards, Interesting. you catch it between your hands, you have the time to do so, and you can guarantee their point will be high. As you can see, the point is well above the helmet. This brings True. your point on line. Instead of engaging the heel in the beat, you're engaging the space between your hands in the beat. And it's specific to stepping backwards. And this is where the Bobism falls apart. Mm. He thought that it could be, that it had mm. to be done all the time from either side. Mm. And this is where the mistake was. Mm. Mm. From mm. the left side, either with axe or spear, this play works to get your point online awesome all right and i'm not the only one who goes for this you can talk to rob lovett you can talk mm. to mark lancaster uh the exiles guys are in with it mm. uh, you know I, they're the only people i really take any major consideration of <laughs> uh, the csg people are really good for the dagger and wrestling and you know like sword stuff especially sword and two hands because they spend a lot of time on it i don't really take much of the wrestling stuff that 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 highly uh, depends on who's instructing jesse kula for example amazing guy absolutely amazing but you know some of their other instructors they they go through the plays like pantomime well, the way that Sean um, Hayes does. He doesn't like pantomime. Well, this is so, recorded. Uh, I know, I know. This oh, is recorded. Okay, okay. My comments are moderated <laughs> to the effect on okay. armored combat. I see. Okay? Gotcha. In, right. in armored combat, these things that you can do out of armor fall apart. So people that seriously practice in armor can be differentiated from those that play with armor and play with light weapons because inertia doesn't affect their actions. They can do whatever they want because there's no real push or pull involved in their change of balance. Um, I've said this, I've said this to their faces, so I have no problem saying it now. No, I, no, I, mean, I know, not, I know. I'm not it's, running anyone down. <laughs> just like when you when you play this stuff through. You know, I I know you're feeling very difficult about this, but. You know what? You're not the one that's going to bear the abuse from it. No, that's true. It's yeah, it's yeah. it's that's just that the videos are, are are sitting up on uh, on YouTube for, uh, for random people. But anyways, it doesn't matter. Uh, please, Alex, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, can you clarify the counter again? The counter, right? Um, great question. So the ca the counter of the thrust is easily performed when the point of the lance breaks. Uh, let me read the second edition. When the it point of the lance okay. is broken, always turn the lance around and strike with the heel. So. By broken, same as, same as on exactly, the other side, ex exactly, okay. Okay. exactly. That's that that that's it. Turn the lance around and strike with the heel. So like the the main attack is again parry plus strike, rest on the other side, and the counter is also the same. Keep on turning until you hit him, hit him with yeah. the, the heel. Okay, yeah. thanks. Yeah, and and obviously with the with the the broad provisos that govern largo play will also govern us here. So you know you can always leave. Um, don't make sandcastles out of shit. You know, if it's not working, don't try and force it. Um, don't pretend you're leading when you're when you're not in tempo. You know, set things up. Only go three uh, three moves in at most. You know, uh, and then get out. Blah blah blah. All that stuff. 
Um, you know, don't sit okay. there mid shaft to mid shaft rowing, trying to get your your yeah. uh, your point online, all that. I, shit. I will I will make a point here that unlike the other five plays, the post does place before this one, the Zugadore is attacking from below as opposed to on high. So when he's attacking from below, you want to make the cover with the middle of your spear instead of the front of your spear because you want it to go high. You don't want to set it off to your right, their left. You want it to go high so that you can use that fulcrum point, contact point between the two spear shafts to rotate horizontally bring your point online in their face so what i'm saying is it's not that you don't use the foot of the spear it's that what's important is that you have it between your hands so that you can rotate it if you were to try to rotate this from below your right hand with the haft or the heel of the spear you wouldn't be able to get your point online very easily because too much of your spear is forward of their spear. Simple geometry. Is that, uh, does that answer your question, uh, Alex? Yep, thank you. Okay, um, it is now 10 o'clock. Does anybody have any other questions or um, uh, anything to add? Yes, sir. Actually, I I, I was um, a bit late. Um, no problem. But to confirm, did we go through just the first plays, or also the spear versus mixed weapons section? So the spear versus mixed wep. Oh, uh, the spear versus mixed weapons section. Uh, so the dagger, spear, and club section was a few was before the senyo. That was a, that was a bunch ago. That that episode's got to be up on the on the playlist. I'm sorry, I, I guess I was looking at a different uh, different manuscript because. Uh... Uh, maybe the, 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 the P it's called the, spear versus mixed weapons, but, uh, uh is it the PD like, you're looking at? Uh, no, it's got the, there's the Paris here and the PD and the, the Getty spear versus mixed weapons. Are you looking at a different, like, ver, like, uh, a yeah, different yeah, yeah, collation? Yeah. The Zugadori attacks with a spear and the, uh, the, the student and the masters counter with a variety of different okay. things. It's got to be this. Staff, this clubs. Yeah, it's got to yeah, be this that's, guy. That's the, the mixed section that, that's yeah. pre-senyo. It's pre-senyo. Pre-senyo. So that's, a, that's a few weeks ago. Right. Uh, yeah, no. no, 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 okay. uh, not at all. If you, no, no, if you, if you look cool, at it, man. yeah, yeah. If you look at it and want to have, uh, and have other questions about it, okay. please, please Again, bring it up. Um, I'm, I'm not the fastest person in replying because other people have control of my time, oddly enough. But um, the... Uh, Polak section, I've answered about half the questions, and I'm almost, you know, i got another two hours or so, I'll have the, the rest of the Polak's questions that have been posed to me done. If you have similar questions in lands where it's not working, put them up, send them to me directly, uh, you know, put them on the, put them on the Emma list, whatever, I don't care, however you get it to me, I mean, you're, you're welcome to use my direct email, which is krakuta at emma.org. Uh, to send me these questions, which uh, a couple of the scholars have, I'm I'm here for you. Like uh, my job as a free scholar is to help people become scholars and to make them better scholars. Literally, that is my job. So I'm not here to make you a free scholar. I'm not here to become a, fro a provost. I'm never going to become a provost because I'm too damn lazy to start my own chapter. That's all there is to it. Um, but I can help you with these things. I am, without question, the most experienced armored fighter in the academy. And I will help you in any way I can. People can argue with my interpretations, and many have, including Brian. But, you know, I'm here. I'm a resource. Take advantage. If something's not making sense to you, ask me. I'll try my best to help. Really. Yep, that's that's what we're here for as uh, as teachers. We're doing this for free, of course, because we we love it uh, so much. We just want more yeah, people doing it with us. That's want, that's it. I that's want it. another ten free scholars to carry on our art because I'm sixty years old, and in another five years, I won't even be able to practice this stuff on the floor. 
10. Let's go for 100. Let's do 10. Well, I have 100. I haven't. Uh, <laughs> I have. I don't want to live out my arthritis just too bad. I, uh, I, I mean, I've been, I've been fighting in armor. My first single combat was in 1978 in armor. So I have a wealth of experience in all sorts of physical combat in and out of armor uh, as well as military experience and stuff i'm happy to answer questions fiori is my my major study although i do work with ms133 and i'm extremely knowledgeable about the jude lahash but asking questions about that stuff demands so much technical knowledge of actually fighting in armor with an axe that it's difficult to just answer the odd questions because they're too long. Yeah. <laughs> it just takes too long to explain the basis of the answer. Um, Fury is much simpler to explain in that respect because he's just straightforward, just totally straightforward. Yeah. And and on that note, um, so to, we we managed to eat the whole spear section today we made some good progress so uh stuff, as fiori well says let that suffice for our treatment of the spear it will be online yeah. in a few days um i hope all of you found it useful as always and um yeah we will see you again uh same bat time same bat channel next week for drum roll the mounted section what it should be way cool it's lots be of awesome um okay amber amber if you're still there Whatever questions you had about, okay, cool. Whatever questions you had about pole axe or, for that matter, spear in addition, hustle it up and and, and pop them over to me. Um, I haven't got any time tomorrow, but on Wednesday I'm going to spend some more time finishing the questions that other people have asked in the last couple of weeks because I want to get this stuff uh, down on paper before I get into my next big project, and I got something coming up uh, in August. So let's do it. Yeah. All right, everybody, you guys have a, a wonderful evening. Be safe, um, be healthy, get vaccinated so we can see you all back in the sows sooner than later. Also, also keep uh, your eyes out for um, restart announcements and information. Yeah, dun, like dun, dun. Toronto, Toronto could be happening in the near future. Keep your ears, uh, eyes out, ears peeled. We're getting yeah. there. All right, everybody. Have a Take wonderful care, night. Folks. Have a great night. Take care. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thanks a lot. Have a good night.